So if you are a homeschooler and your child's next course is Algebra 2, well, you definitely want to pay attention to this video because if your child has not mastered this critical skill from Algebra 1, they're going to have a tough time in Algebra 2. Okay, so what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about factoring. So let's take a look at this simple example. Hopefully your child can do this problem. But we have 4x squared minus 25, and they should be able to factor this expression. Now, if you think they have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through exactly how to factor this expression, and we'll talk about how to improve in factoring because, again, this is a critical skill necessary for success in Algebra 2. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help homeschooling Algebra 2 or any other math course, make sure to check out my award-winning homeschool math program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into how to factor this expression. And what we need to do is just do a fast review of basic factoring concepts. All right, so factoring is what? Well, let's suppose we had the number 40, and we said factor 40. Well, we're looking for factors of 40. Now, what are factors? Well, factors are numbers such that when you multiply them together, you get back to this main number. So here, factors of 40 would be 4 and 10, but there are other factors of 40 as well. So 2 times 20 are factors of 40, et cetera, et cetera. Now you can continue on and actually find the prime factors of 40, but uh, the mechanics here or the process of taking this number and breaking it up into other values such that when you multiply these values, you get back to this number is called factoring. And these here are called factors. All right, so that's just a quick numeric example of factoring. And we could do the same thing in algebra. Now, uh, before I explain that, let's just go back to this example, 40 again. So again, 4 times 10 is, uh, these are factors of 40. But I could also have a number like 17. So 17 is prime. So the only factors here is 1 and the number. So sometimes numbers are not prime, and you can actually find factors other than 1 but sometimes you have a number that is prime and its only factor is one and the number. And it's the same case in algebra, right? So we just don't know if something can be factored, but uh, factoring again is a critical skill. Matter of fact, you can't solve equations, simplify expressions if you do not know how to factor. So what we're trying to do here is break this thing up into factors and uh, particularly we are looking for two binomials, two things such that when we multiply them together, we get back to this. Now, let me give you a quick example, a quick algebraic example of factoring. So let's suppose I have 4x plus 8. So here I can factor out the greatest common factor, which is 4. So this is going to be equal to 4 times x plus 2 because I can use the distributive property to get back to my original expression, right? So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 and x plus 2 would be factors of 4x plus 8. So here, when we factor this simple expression, we factored out the greatest common factor. But that's not always the case in algebra. There is a lot of other situations that you need to know. Matter of fact, let me just map these out real fast for you. So when it comes to factoring, the first thing that uh, you need to understand is that you want to look for the greatest common factor. But if you can't find the greatest common factor, well, you need to evaluate the situation and use other methods. Now, sometimes we are dealing with a trinomial. So I'm talking again about basic algebra one level uh, algebra. So if I had something like x squared minus 6x plus 8, this is a trinomial, or specifically a quadratic trinomial. So when you have uh, trinomials, you want to try to factor them. And uh, here we actually have 
two different situations. I call them a case one and case two. And uh, what makes a case one is a, a case one quadratic trinomial is that you have a one in front of your x squared term or your y squared term, uh, whatever the case might be. So again, this is a trinomial because it has three terms. Now, a case two trinomial is where the leading coefficient is something other than one. So if we had like 9x squared minus 6x plus 8, that is a case two. So in algebra one, you really learn a lot about how to factor trinomials. Okay, so again, you gotta understand the greatest common factor and how to factor trinomials. Now, sometimes you have things other than a trinomial, like this expression right here. So we have four and 25, so there is no greatest common factor and we're not dealing with a trinomial. So what do we do in this situation? Well, what we can do is uh, try to use special factoring rules. So I'm talking about things like the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. Matter of fact, uh, this is uh, the rule that we are going to follow to factor this right here, but there's other special factoring rules. And then lastly, if uh, any special factoring rules don't work, you can try something called group factoring. All right, so these are all the things that uh, a person really needs to understand if they're going into the Algebra 2 level because you're expected to know how to factor pretty well in Algebra 2. Now, if your child had a tough time with uh, Algebra 1, it's likely because uh, they had a tough time with factoring. And of course, there's other reasons as well. But I can guarantee you, if you work on your factoring skills, if you get really strong in factoring, it's going to make everything much, much easier in algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and factor this. And uh, as I indicated, we have something that's not a trinomial. We don't have a common factor. And we don't have a kind of a group factoring situation. But we do have a special factoring scenario going on here. And that is we have the difference, i.e. we're subtracting something of two squares, right? So we have the difference of two squares. So the rule looks like this. So when you have a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. All right, so this is the rule for the difference of two squares. But you got to know how to apply it. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is think of each of these terms here as a square. All right, so what number is uh, no, what number square gets us back to 25? Well, hopefully you're saying, well, that's 5 squared. So again, what we want to do is think of these values as squares. So instead of 25, we want to think of this as 5 squared. And of course, we have our difference right there. Now, what is 4x squared? What gets us to 4x squared? What, in other words, what can we square to get us uh, back to 4x squared? Well, what you could do here is simply take the square root of 4x squared. So the answer is 2x because 2x times 2x is what? Well, that's going to be 4x times x is x squared. So that's 4x squared. All right, so now that we're looking at our problem in terms of the difference of two squares, we can follow the rule and uh, actually get this thing factored. All right, so what is the rule again for the difference of two squares? I'll write it out right here. So a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. All right, now in this situation, the a is 2x and the b is 5. So we need to just follow the pattern here very carefully and then we'll simplify. All right, so a plus b is what? Well, that'll be 2x plus 5. Okay, so again, our a here is 2x and our b is 5. So we're going to have a minus b, which is 2x minus 5. All right, so these are the factors of 4x squared minus 25. And we can check this uh, algebra by doing the multiplication. 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5 is this equal to 4x squared minus 25. Well, hopefully your child understands how to multiply two binomials. You can use the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. So let's just do this real quick. So 2x times 2x 
is 4x squared. So that's our first, our outer terms is 2x times negative 5, that's negative 10x. Our inner terms is 5 times 2x, that is a positive 10x. And then our last terms here is 5 times negative 5, which is minus 25 or negative 25. Okay, so you can see here our 10x's are going to go away. Negative 10x plus 10x is 0, so we're left with 4x squared minus 25, which is our original starting point, right? So these must be the factors because when we multiplied them together, we got back to 4x squared minus 25. Now, I covered a lot of ground in this video because I really wanted to try to emphasize the importance of factoring because Algebra 2 is a critical course for your child. As a matter of fact, I'll leave you with this here. Typically, people take Algebra 2 in their junior year. So as a freshman or ninth grade, matter of fact, we'll do it this way. So here is high school level mathematics. You've got 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now, if you think that your child is going to be going to college, or if you're definitely sure that your child is going to college or university, this is typically the path, the college prep path for mathematics. So in ninth grade, you take Algebra 1. In 10th grade, you take geometry. Okay, so this is the recommended path. And then 11th grade, you do what? Well, if you have Algebra 1 and geometry under your belt, if you will, if you have these courses already behind you, well, then you're ready for the SAT and ACT, which is typically uh, taken in the 11th grade. All right, so if you do this track, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 in the 10th grade, and some people do this. I'm not a fan of this because in the 11th grade, if you take geometry, well, you're still learning geometry and taking the SAT and ACT during that year, okay? About, maybe about 50% or 40% of the SAT and ACT is geometry. So you gotta get geometry behind you. All right, so again, this is a, kind of the typical path. So Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, which is a continuation of Algebra 1. Effectively, in Algebra 2, you review everything in Algebra 1 and then learn more advanced algebra. So it's been, you know, it should be for most students that uh, they have taken geometry in between their algebra courses. So you need to take good notes and review, especially factoring. And then after Algebra 2, if your child is on the college prep track, uh, typically they'll take pre-calculus, or that is the best course, and that will get them ready to take calculus in college. And a lot of majors actually require calculus, right? You'll be surprised if your child is going to um, maybe major in business or finance. Well, they will be taking some calculus, so they got to get that pre-calculus down. So this is the typical college prep track. So I offer all these courses, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus. My homeschool math program is really focused for those uh, people that are going college bound. Okay, now again, you don't have to be going to college to be successful in my homeschool math program, but if that is your plan, well, I definitely know the math that your child needs to understand. Okay, so again, you can find uh, a link to my homeschool math program in the description of this video. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.